go. P5A, we're going to solve quadratics. Um, there's five ways that we know how to solve a quadratic. We're going to do four of them today. Because the last way is to solve graphically, and we're going to do that on Monday with other equations too. So we're going to solve quadratics. Quadratics. All right, we are not doing any imaginary numbers yet. Um, imaginary numbers don't come into play until P6, so we're not quite there. Yeah, so we're just going to do real answers today. All right, so here we go. We've got four ways to solve a quadratic. So the first way I'm going to start with is my favorite way to solve a quadratic, which is by factoring. Factoring is pretty fast. You get the answers quickly. Um, sometimes it's not factorable, so you can't solve by factoring. Um, and then I also tell you which way I want you to solve the quadratic and make sure you do it that way, okay? All right, so number one, here we go. We've got x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. So we're going to start with a very basic solve by factoring. Now, solve by factoring, um, you're going to factor it first, of course. And you guys are all factoring professionals after that worksheet you did on Tuesday. Um, and then we take it one step farther and we actually solve it. Okay. So factoring is what you did on Tuesday. Now, solving by factoring is what we're going to do today. So you ask yourself, Self. What times what's negative 12 that adds up to negative 1? A negative 4 and positive 3. Good. And then we solve. So what would make the first factor equal to 0 would be 4. And the second one would be negative 3. And so there you go. And with quadratics, you usually get two answers, not all the time. Sometimes um, if it's imaginary, then you get no solutions because it's for real numbers. Um, and then sometimes you get a duplicate. Because it could be x minus 4 and x minus 4, and then you'd get just one answer. All right, let's do number 2. Um, let's do a little bit of harder factoring. Let's go 2x cubed, or squared, sorry, 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. All right, I'm going to let you try this one. You're going to go ahead and factor that, however you like to factor, okay? You have other ways to factor the star method, that's fine. You guys like the star method? It's pretty good. You got to the factoring part, and then you stop there to solve. That's okay. So this should have factored as, what is it, 2x uh, plus 1 mm -hmm, and x minus 2. Perfect. All right, so you get to here, and a lot of you guys, you know, x equals 2 is pretty obvious. It's this one that's a little tricky. You got it? Yeah, subtract 1 and then divide by 2, so negative 1 half. Mm -hmm. What I like to do is you can, you can think of this as I'm trying to find out what makes this factor 0, so I just set up an equation and solve it. So you subtract 1 to the other side and then divide by 2. All right, let's do one more, number 3. And this one's not a quadratic, but we're going to solve it by factoring, so I thought I'd just put it in there. So x cubed minus 25 x equals 0. All right, this one's a cubic. We're going to solve by factoring. We actually get a quadratic after we factor out the GCF. So um, so go ahead and factor an x out first. Always look for a GCF to factor out at the beginning. So then you get x squared minus 25 equals 0. And we have the difference of two perfect squares which you should be very comfortable and used to. and So we have x plus 5 and x minus 5. So once you're done factoring, then you want to solve because this is an equation. And so then we get 0. That comes from this one right here, this one right here. And then the other ones would be plus or minus 5. Good. And so we got three answers on that one. When we do polynomials in chapter 2 or 3 or whatever, um, we're going to find out that the number, the degree, has the same number of answers. Okay, let's move on. So you're good at factoring. Here we go, part B. Uh, the second way we're going to learn to solve a quadratic is called extracting square roots. Sounds like something a dentist would do. <laughs> extracting square roots. But um bum clean fun. 
Yep. All right, so um, for these, you know, what you're trying to do is you're trying really, there's no x term for these. It's just x squared in the problem. And so what you can do is you can solve for x squared and then take the plus and minus square root. So if we have x squared minus 81 equals 0, okay? You can solve that by factoring, x plus 9, x minus 9. Um, or you can solve it by extracting roots. And extracting roots is to add the 81 to the other side. So you get x squared equals 81. And so we're thinking of two numbers, that square to give us 81. And when you take the square root, you get plus and minus 9. Because 9 squared is 81, and negative 9 squared is also 81. Two answers. Remember that? Last year on the Algebra 2 final, when it was that matrix? Oh, I'm just and the matrices were equal, and this was x squared, and you had to solve and there oh, were, yes. x was plus and minus 5. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I dinged you. I got you on that one. Ooh. Well, actually, you probably did. I, I did. Number, <laughs> okay, number 5. Good job. 2x minus 1 squared equals 9. 2x minus 1 squared equals 9. Okay, a little bit more complicated. Same idea, though. Okay, you have a squared on, on the left side. So let's go ahead and take the plus and minus square root and get rid of that squared. So we have 2x minus 1 equals plus or minus 3. And now we have two equations to set up and solve. So I've got 2x minus 1 can equal 3, or 2x minus 1 could equal negative 3, and it's going to give me the two answers that I need. Now, right here, if you're good at solving this in your head, great. You can do that. It's fine. Add 1, you get 4. Divide by 2, you get x equals 2. But try and show some work. And always, when you're solving equations, you work down the page. Up. No. So many, <laughs> so many people still go side to side. It drives me crazy. And then you get x is negative 1. All right, so you've noticed the last two problems. They were almost too perfect, if you know what I mean. So let's go not so perfect, because life's messy. All right, we've got, no, x plus 3 squared equals 12. All right, so same problem as the last one. When you take the plus and minus square root, we get x plus 3 equals plus or minus rad 12. Now, you should feel very uncomfortable right now. Why? Because... Rad 12? Really? We're not going to ever leave it as rad 12. Oh, because we're getting rid of the squared, and whenever you get rid of a squared on an equation, you always take the plus and minus square root. Mm -hmm. 12 has a perfect square in there. 4. So 12, as you remember, is 4 times 3. And so when we write this, we want to write plus or minus 2 rad 3. We want to rationalize all of our radicals. And then we get x equals, we'll subtract the 3 to the other side. You can put it on the front, the back, wherever, it doesn't matter. I like to put it right there. And you still get two answers. You get negative 3 plus 2 rad 3 and negative 3 minus 2 rad 3. It's my favorite number, by the way. <laughs> What's yours, like 4? Yes. Wait. No. You can do plus or minus 2 rad 3 minus 3. Yeah, but usually we put it in the front. Okay, let's move on. Halfway there. Letter C. The next way we are going to learn how to, or remember how to solve a quadratic, is by complete the square. Yes. No, this one's terrible, huh? It does. This, these are, yeah, these take a while. Okay, we're going to do this by completing the square. And we're going to do two different kinds. Um, the first one's the one that you did in Algebra 2 last year. So it should, it should be like, you know, kind of coming back to you, like that stalker girlfriend you had. All right, x squared plus 8x uh, plus 5 equals 0. All right, so this is not factorable. 
Um, we could use the quadratic formula, which is going to be the last part. Oops, sorry, kind of ruined it for you. Um, but we're going to do this by completing the square. So here's the steps to completing the square. First of all, this 5 right here is not a perfect square. It's kind of ruining things. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract it over to the other side. So I get x squared plus 8x, and then leave yourself a little room here, equals negative 5. Okay? And what we're going to do with the left side of this is we're going to turn this into a perfect square, a perfect square trinomial. So the key to this is you're going to take 1 half of b and square it. Okay? Half of b and square it. And then you're going to take that number and you're going to add it to both sides of the equation. Yeah. So what's half of 8? So b is, b is this number right here. This is the coefficient of x. So... 4 squared is 16, and you're going to do unto one side of the equation as you do unto the other. It's the golden rule of algebra. There it is. And what you just did was, yeah, you made it a little bit more complicated, but you have created for yourself a perfect square trinomial. What that means is that factors as a binomial squared. And that would be x plus 4 times x plus 4, which is x plus 4 squared. It's always half of the middle term. The middle term is negative. This will be negative also. And this is equal to 11. Okay. Yeah? We're good? Okay. So then from here on out, it's just uh, extracting roots. Okay? So that was like the only new part, really, the, the complete the square part. And then you take the plus and minus square root. So x plus 4 equals plus or minus square root 11. And then subtract 4 to the other side. Do you remember that? A little shout out to Matthew Weaver, who's off to college. That was his favorite way to solve a quadratic. Okay. Here we go. I know. Yes, the new Weaver. Yes, cute. Yeah, he came from St. Anthony's. Yeah. He's the shortest one out of all of them, and he went to St. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I said, there's girls here. He said, yes. He said, when we were playing tennis, he was like, yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. And now he's here. Welcome. We welcome him. So he's like the prodigal son. He's come back. Okay. Here we go. Two x squared. Oh no no no. That the prodigal son did too, but he wasn't. All right. So. Two x squared minus eight x minus seven. Okay. You did not do these last year. We took these out. This was too hard for algebra two. Yeah. Um. What we've done now is we put a number on the front. Okay, instead of a 1 there, now the coefficients change. So there's a little extra thing you have to do. All right, start by getting rid of the 7. So let's add it over to the other side. So I have 2x squared minus 8x equals 7. Okay, on the left-hand side, I'm still trying to create that perfect square trinomial, but that 2 is going to be a problem because 2 is not a perfect square. So here's how you deal with any coefficient other than 1 in front of the x squared. You factor it out. And you factor it out of the terms that are on the left side of your equation. Okay? Yes, you can, but you don't want to because you're trying to make this into a perfect squared trinomial. So leave the x there. Just factor out the coefficient of x squared. And now you do the same thing. We're looking at the middle part of this, and we're saying uh, half of b squared. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. Squared is 4. Okay. And what am I going to add to the right side? Four. No. Oh, one half of b squared. Mm -hmm. Anybody know? Eight. Eight. What did I add on this side? I added eight. See how this two to x squared to negative 4x to 4. So I actually added 8 on this side, so I have to add 8 over here. So that's a little tricky. Be careful of that. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. No. Nothing's wrong. Oh. <laughs> All right. So now <laughs> we'll just move on. So now let's go ahead and factor this, this middle part here. So the 2 stays outside. Factor this as x minus 2 squared, and this is equal to... 15. All right, 
So divide by two first. Get rid of that two that's out there before you take the square root. You have to divide. And here's where I'm not going to be super picky. You can take the plus and minus square root, and you can just leave it in the fraction. I know. It's going to be okay. Some of you aren't going to like that. And you can rationalize if you want to, but you don't need to. If you want to write 7.5, I'm kind of okay with that too. And then add 2 to the other side, and you're done. Okay, so that's a little trickier, right, with that number out there that you have to factor out. And then don't forget, you're not adding 4 to the other side. You're adding whatever times that to the other side. Whew, that's a tough one, huh? That'll be the hardest one that you'll do. No, just today. All right, and then the last part, the good old-fashioned quadratic formula. Everyone knows this, right? We'll just do one, one example just to kind of... You still don't know it? Does anyone sing the song? Yes. Miss Cowie sang it. Oh, she has a beautiful voice, too. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. You need to make sure it's in that form. And the good old quadratic formula, do you, do you want to see a proof of it? Like, no. do you just agree? Like, okay, I have a proof of it. Oh, good. Yeah, you need proof. Good. So, actually, I need Okay. Negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Oh, there's a 2A? Yeah. <laughs> You've been getting these wrong all this whole time. It's like Pop Goes the Weasel, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm using the quadratic formula today. All right, number, what are we on, nine? Number nine. All right, quadratic formula is really good when uh, something's not factorable, um, when you want exact answers, so you're not allowed to graph it. So 3x squared minus 6x equals 5. All right, so in order for the quadratic formula to work, you have to have it set equal to zero, okay? So let's get that five and bring it over. So you have three x squared minus six x minus five equals zero. This is probably my least favorite way because you're just putting numbers in a formula. It's boring. There's no, there's no fun stuff like, like complete the square. You have to think. All right, here we go. X is equal to six plus or minus, um, let's see, b squared, which is 36, minus 4 times 3 times negative 5, uh, all over 6. All right, and then take it in steps. Take it in steps. So we're going to have x equals 6 plus or minus, and you can use your calculator. Here we go. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Turn the sound off. That's really annoying. <laughs> Same old jokes. 96, still not funny. Over 6. Any perfect squares in 96 that you can think of? 16, very good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had to try that earlier because I was like divide by 4, and then 24 was there, and 24 still has a perfect square, which is 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. So 96 is 16 times 6. So you get 6 plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4 rad 6 over 6. We're still not done. One last step. Simplify. Simplify. Mm -hmm. You can do it a couple ways. You can split it up or just take all three terms. They're all divisible by 2. So let's go ahead, rationalize, and then reduce. You like this one? I don't. There you go. Did I do it right? No. 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 That's three. Oopsie-woo. 